This is honestly this podcast. I, I came into this podcast pretty tired, and now I'm just even more like stressed out about. I'm that. getting grey hairs. I'm stressed and I'm tired. And you're, you. you're making me angry. I I really am rethinking this whole marriage thing. Like you must stop. <laughs> I, I cannot believe you think the fact that I would like you to leave me at the altar so I would get sympathy. You overpromise and underdeliver. That's what you do. What do you mean overpromise and underdeliver? Because you're a people pleaser. Oh my god. You mentioned one of the episodes that you, you love being touched, don't you? You love pressure. Yeah. And you absolutely love the fact that uh, if you could have one of those blood pressure machines just yeah. on you all the time, you'd love that, Stop right? It. So. <gasps> what is this? We have a clamp. for you today to try on for the beginning of the episode a blood pressure machine. Oh my god, I love it! So here we go. Get your arm out. This is going to cheer you up for the episode. I know you're tired today. I know you are. So this is we're going to put this on your arm, and hopefully this is going to give you the energy to really come into the podcast. I'm just going to put it up to a hundred the whole time. Okay, you ready for this? I'm going to yeah. come over and do it for you. This is genius. So do I get to keep this? Is this my brother. So he's just strapping on my little um, portable blood pressure. So I could just take this on nights out with me, put it under my jumper. Is that just good? Be, Is that nice and yeah, that's tight? nice and tight. Could Here be a bit go. tighter. Oh, yeah. <gasps> best feeling ever. That's truly the best feeling ever. That cures everything. That's lovely. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to sit back and relax like this. That was lovely. <laughs> is it tight enough? It's really tight. Is it oh, really? There we go. What is my blood pressure? Imagine I'm dying. Your blood pressure just says error. <laughs> it just says error. Oh. Perfect. Should we begin the podcast? Let's begin. I was talking to someone. I said, how, they said, how do you describe Sophie? And I said, I said, Sophie's like my lighthouse. Oh, no, 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 yeah. no. We're not stopping off with soppy, soppy stuff. It's not please. soppy at all. I just said you are. You're like... You're like I my... light up your life. What does a See? lighthouse do? It looks out onto the ocean. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, but what does it do? What's its job? What's a lighthouse? Light up people's lives. <laughs> so, so the fishermen can see. I don't know. I have a freaking clue. <laughs> if you had to guess what a lighthouse does. I would imagine it's a little box that lights up. And looks over the sea so that the fishermen can see where the lighthouse is. And they can fish in the sea. Wait, so you think that's like a floodlight to the sea? Yes, I don't know. What does a lighthouse do? It guides the ships away from the rocks. That's what I basically just said. It guides the fishermen away from the rocks. Yeah, I know. So so you're my lighthouse. So I guide you around from the rocks, the bad things that you used to do in your life. I take you to the good side. No, you bring me home safely. You're like the sea. Yeah, exactly. And, and anything but you is the lighthouse. Because you, you are the hecticness in my life. No, I'm not the hecticness in your life. No, you you are the you bring me home. So you're like um sat yeah. nav. You're like a penguin. Always with me for life. No, penguin. Like that one. No. You, you're like my lobster. Always coming too. What is this? You're just saying analogies now that don't even make sense. You you You're like a pony. Ride me back home safely. Why am I an animal? I think you've done reality TV for quite some time and it's bred you into this person who just is constantly a metaphor. It's quite impressive, but also... When do I ever use analogies? Constantly. You'll be like, Sophie, you know, it's like the sea and you just use one. Five yes, because that ago. was a nice analogy to use about you, my love for you. To your therapist, like you're not... You my know, therapist asked me what you think of Sophie and I said she's like a lighthouse. Why is your therapist asking what you think of the woman you're about to marry? Because it was, it was a good game. We just had a fun what, thing with it. You sat and you gave us all far, quick far. What do you think of Sophie? <laughs> no, was, you were you, obviously discussing me then. So what were you discussing me in the therapy session? I was, I was discussing lots of things. I was discussing lo lots of different things. What? 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 what do we think about Sophie? Surely at this point in oh the marriage we know. So something that was meant to be so sweet and nice has just turned into something just now aggressive. It's not aggressive, but do we know what we think of Sophie other than the fact she's a lighthouse? <laughs> what has happened? 
I don't know. So listen, I'm tired today. It's been a long week. All right. That's what I feel you. I am tired. No, but I'm more tired than you. If you want to. Why are you more tired than me? Because I had to go to two parties last night. Oh, woe is me. Drinking the tequila in the background. I I had one tequila. You two. Because I gave you mine. Because I had a sip of And I didn't drink it. And I didn't drink it. Oh, I saw you. You sip, 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 do. I I didn't. I had one tequila. Two. But and when I say, guys, I had to pass it to him because it was genuinely, I asked for a tequila soda and lime. It was just up pint of tequila and I was like uh, Jamie necking them both okay and then I had to go to my my candy killers Christmas party straight and what after. did you say to me oh god just gonna get lit tonight no I didn't you went home and ordered a marouche yeah oh. and guys guess what came in my marouche delivery which is a Lebanese food what happened right so I open it up I'm like yum 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 <laughs> it's like midnight that you ordered it and I was like, yum, yum, what's this? It was looked like hearts. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was genuinely about to eat here. I was about to call them, go on, go on went on to delivery to be like, you've all gave me the wrong order. I look at my order. I'd ordered chicken liver by mistake. <laughs> by mistake, obviously, instead of chicken. Is that what I ate last night in the fridge? <laughs> Sophie, I came home and ate... <laughs> no, Sophie. I Sophie. knew you would. I literally said to my friend... Sophie, that's really not funny. I'm not joking. I messaged my friend Chrissy and I said, Chrissy, I ordered chicken livers by mistake. I'm going to leave them in the fridge because I guarantee you, Jamie, will come back and eat them. Sophie. And I forgot to look this morning. Sophie, I came and ate them because I thought it was chicken. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, it was vile. It, it was... looked like hearts. How could you think that's chicken? It was like brown. I, I it thought was... it was chicken and I ate it. And I was like, this is weird. I thought it was off. <laughs> Because I then came up into bed, as I normally do. And what, you know, when you come home late, what you like to turn on, poof, we've spoken about this. Rah, rah, yeah, rah. better, because you don't think it's murder in the house. No, you know and then what I, what, what I did, I've never been so scared in all my life. I, I came up the stairs and I climbed onto the bed and you went... Aah! No, Aah! Ca- <laughs> wow, that hurt my head. Right, can I I... Sophie, it's me. It's me. And then you kept going, it's only me. For hours, I was like, all right, shut up. Yeah, and then I lay next to you, next to you, and I was stroking your hair quite sweetly like that, looking at you, and all I could smell was Lebanese on your breath. <laughs> that is vile. Can I just also add that you climbed onto the bed on all fours and were leaning over me. That's why I went, and you smell of a brewery. And I was like, I didn't the-? drink anything. Yeah, you did. That's no, I didn't, I didn't drink anything. I was like, what the hell is that? That's why I screamed, because there was like an animal on all fours across my head. I was like, who is that? <laughs> Terrifying. I was fast you scared, asleep. You scared me. You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you silly bat. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I've never called you that in my life. <laughs> silly bat. <laughs> Sorry, for, oh my God, big news. Big news, what? Big news, baby. Tell me. Oh, baby, big news. Tell me, baby. Oh, baby, it's big news. Tell me. All right, baby, big. Stop saying baby. Okay, baby, big. Oh my God. Okay, well, all right, you ready? Big news, baby. What the fuck is going on? Well, I got some big, big, big news. Tell me what's going on. Okay, do you remember last episode? Yes, that, yeah. So Charlie wanted to ask Izzy out to be his girlfriend and they listened to the podcast together when they sleep. Yeah, I shed think, a tear. I remember it very well. You shed a tear. We have a reply from <gasps> Izzy. Stop. Okay, we have a reply from Izzy who says, Hi, it's Izzy, the girl from the podcast. I said no. No? Yeah. What, you're joking? No, she said no. Why would you what? I'm kidding. She said yes. Me, me. <laughs> she Just said me. yes. She said to yes to Charlie and you guys. Thank you guys so much. It made me made it really special for us. Love, 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 love you and the pod. Oh, Izzy said yes. Yay. Hey, Izzy, congratulations. Congratulations. It does Izzy. make me think again. So if, if anyone wants to propose on our podcast, please get in touch and we can do it on our podcast. That would make my year. Actually, we want to someone propose on the podcast. Get in touch. We'll keep it a complete secret and we can do it. That just feels... This is why this episode is going to be a good episode. Do you know why? Because it's... Got because me. who said yes? Izzy. Said yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nilly West Podcast. Uh, episode what, Sophie? Episode 98. <laughs> nope. F- <laughs> what? 54. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a year since we would have had the wedding episode by now. So 380 then. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. it's not been a year, has it? That's a lie. Oh, I'm going to go with episode 200 because it's nearly coming up to January, which is when we started. <laughs> episode 200. So if we've done this before, and I, don't, I really don't want to make fun because it's really. 365 days in a year, motherfucker. And how many weeks in a year? <laughs> <laughs> 52. 
Yes! <laughs> She's learned. And how like many months in a year? 12, you idiot. <laughs> okay. Okay, on the menu today, on episode 37 of the podcast, it's episode... Wow, it feels like it's been a hell of a lot of time. Longer. It's episode 37. Uh, we got our weekly catch-up. Um, we also have a little surprise for you, which I'm very excited about. And we were meant to have a guest today, Stop. but the guest couldn't make it, which is really upsetting. So we have a big wedding update because we're really stressed. Today is a very stressful podcast, guys. I'm really sorry. So if we get a little deep into it all, it's because we're just a little bit overwhelmed with all of the wedding admin going on. Your shoes are so big for you, and I always think this. You know when my shoes are big? No, but they're too big for no, you. You know what people say but about- But you do have big feet. You know what people say about people with big, big shoes? Yeah, I know. What do they say? Big dick. N no, big feet. <laughs> no. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Why were you talking about I my dick? I bet Pete Davidson's shoes are huge. Sorry, what the hell? So you're basically just right. saying you think Pete Davidson has a massive penis? Yes, I do think that. And what, that turns you on? What is that? Uh, no. Okay, gross. so then you can't... But he gets all the fit girls. That's what the, that's what the theory is, right? Do you know who I find fit? Emma Ratajkowski. Yeah, so do I. All right, well, I thought you were going to be more of a reaction there. Oh, look, she there, a little bit of reaction. <laughs> Here it is. I don't, are you joking? She's gorgeous. <laughs> Here it is. Are you joking? Like, Woo! Oh, no, your agony in my ears and just speed on up. What do you want to say? I don't your... want to say. Do you know what? I, I, I bone to pick with you again this week. No, no, this bone no. to pick must stop. Okay, well, I've got a bone I've to got pick. four bones to pick with you then. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's start it. Let's start picking each other's But I'll tell you what mine is. I have... It's, it's Christmas season, all right? It's Christmas season. It is, it's the theatre is coming out again. <laughs> Shut up, you douchebag. <laughs> it's so dramatic. It's Christmas season, all right? And I'm very excited. Do you know why I like Christmas season? Because it's cold and you like being freezing. <laughs> no, because it's advent calendars. And I love getting my chocolate advent calendar. I go to my advent calendar to get my chocolate. All of the doors have been opened and all the chocolate has gone. Liar, liar. All the chocolate has gone. The chocolate hasn't gone. I opened four doors because I was in search. I got him a Tony's chocolate <laughs> advent calendar and I was in craving white chocolate. Yes, I know, flaxitarian. I was craving white chocolate and I so couldn't. So you went through all the doors. Four doors. No, you didn't. So because I went to number seven and it's gone. No, guys, there was one that was double door and it had two in it. And I yes. was like, bingo. Yes. Do you know what that is? That's Christmas Eve. You <laughs> ate the Christmas Eve one. That's what I you ate the Christmas Eve one. Stop. Well, you did. You ate the Christmas Eve one. Well, you opened one of mine the other day. What are yours? You opened my pepper nut. Um, Pippa Nut. You have it. The Pippa Nut one's mine. It got sent with my name on it. It said to Sophie Charlotte. Habu. You don't like peanut butter. I know, but they don't know that. Well, they do now. Well, I like uh, those. I love peanut butter. Would well, you know what I don't like? What? Go and pick your bone with me now. That you cancel on me every single day. I I have a dinner. You cancel on me. You turn up late. Last night, he comes in. He's like, oh, I'm only going to the party for now. Then I've got another party. Going to drive to Wales to pick up the puppy. It's been in the advent, in the calendar for months and months and months. Sophie, this is a lie. On the day, he goes, I can't come. I've got to shoot something. I was like, so I have to drive to Wales <laughs> seven hours with no company. And we all know Jamie thinks I'm a lethal driver. So really, you have no care about my well-being. Was, Sophie brought back this car and um, she had it. And then she said, oh, Jamie, can you help me drive it back to um, whatever the spot? The spot is literally one street away. Well, I thought I'd give him a driving lesson. <laughs> probably probably give... illegal to be saying this because she... you haven't passed your driving Well, yet. it was literally one street away. It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, we get in the car and I get in the driving seat and I didn't realise it was uh, it was manual because I'm used to driving automatic. Now, I'm, I'm a learner driver at the moment. You're insured. We're insured on it, all that kind of stuff. So because you've been driving for how many years? So it's all fine to do. Um, we get to the <laughs> We get to the roundabout when I'm trying to park the car and I stall. He stalled about seven I, times. I stalled in the middle of the road on a hill and then started to roll back towards the car behind. On Westbourne Grove, like everyone was beeping. And instead of just being like, oh shit, he was going, Sophie, do it, do it. I was like, I can't, I'm not in the driving seat. He was like, Sophie, quick, fix it. I was like, I don't know what to do. I didn't know what was going on. If 
you <laughs> not many me. things embarrass jamie but the only thing that embarrassed jamie i would say is speaking loudly <laughs> yeah being it. rude you yeah, hate, hate anything hate that rudeness. appears rude like if i walk through a door and by mistake don't hold it open for the person behind him honestly he quivers with embarrassment yeah because i'm a nice person i don't understand well, why sorry that's a- sometimes i just don't realize there's someone behind me and doing things like that like mm. stalling a car like that will die inside yeah i don't like it those are things that i don't like oh uh, yeah i don't like those i things. can give a shit like none of that phases <laughs> yeah, but i don't understand why it doesn't why would i care if i speak loudly in a restaurant i'm allowed to speak loudly jamie's like shh everyone can hear you i'm like yeah well what am i meant to do not talk <laughs> yeah well you just you don't have that i don't think you have that self-awareness that i have no, I just am an authentic human being. And if you don't like me for who I am, don't get to know me. <laughs> we also had a bit of a, a nightmare. Um, I was on the loo. <laughs> oh my God. I was, I was on the loo. Wow, I you're was on, strange. It was, just baffles me, guys. I was on the loo doing a number two. <laughs> In and my loo. He's got strict instructions to use the downstairs loo because I cannot bear him to use my loo. And lo and behold, I went to go get my fake tan. She went to get the was... fake tan underneath the basin, which is right next to the loo. And she screamed because she thought there was a dead rat because of the I, I genuinely she, she have never, it was such an impulsive reaction I screamed and ran it to the back of the room because I was convinced and I'll tell you why she said that's a dead I'll rat. tell you why because I lived in the house and there was once in the cellar we found a dead rat it was a very old house and we had a cellar and we went down there and there was a dead rat and I can only describe there is only one smell for a dead rat and that is this exact smell like smell last night so I was so scared because by the way I'm terrified of rats that there was a rat that I got into our house and had died in my fake tan box it's it just, wasn't it was the smell <laughs> of my shit <laughs> It's honestly disgusting. It's just so vile. I just don't get why you do it. Like, do you, it's not the recipe for a loving, lasting marriage. <laughs> don't come in when I'm doing it. You like to come in. Because I, I had a limited time to fake down my legs. You had this weird interest, Sophie. We've spoken about this before. I certainly do you, not. You, I can really assure Sophie, you. Sophie, you do. You have a weird interest in my bowels. It's like the time, and I think we've said this on the podcast I before. I really do not have an interest in your bowels. There was that time when we were in lockdown and we were on that country walk and my stomach was really bad that (laughs) that I had the worst stomach in the world and it was so embarrassing and I had to literally I had to like stand up and pull my trousers down and I just I honestly I'm sorry we talk about poo but I I pooed everywhere all over the ground and you and I we had to walk past it to get home I didn't I tried to take you away from you were like some dog after like a rabbit you ran over to it to have a look at it no I guys I wasn't you did and you said it looked like a burger patty <laughs> no guys sorry this is so far honestly like uncooked patty <laughs> it's disgusting okay can i just clarify that i was revolted by that look i think that's enough chat for the time being should we go into our favorite part of any episode that we ever do listeners messages honey i'm do you know i'm proud of you I remember. You got it right, baby. I know. Give me a high five. 38 weeks in. Woo. Th- 37. 37 weeks in. Woo. How many weeks in a year? 52. Got it, baby. Here we go. Here's listeners' messages. Firstly, thank you all to every single person once again who sends us the listeners' messages. I, I don't know why you think it's a bad... It's a nice thing to... Guys, do you like hearing... We all know you're grateful. We all know you love the listeners' messages. Right. Would you rather just skip on past him saying thank you every week? They can't skip. Not, they can't skip. Yeah, you can. You can skip on a podcast. Do you think there's, people are skipping our podcast? I think people skip the ads, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> wee wee wee. There's a noise outside. Wee-wall, wee-wall. wee 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 Hell is going Nino, Nino. <laughs> What's going on? What is going on? That was on? a Nino, Nino. I know, I understand, but it sounded like you had just gone nuts for a second. I know, I thought it was we were for a second. Also, I was on the tube this morning mm-hmm. and I was going, and you know, the wind's like through the wind tunnel. 
and I saw this, it was like in slow motion, I saw this load of hair, like black hair with fluff, like literally the dirt from the floor. And I, it was floating through the air. And I, in my head, I thought, oh, that's going to land on me. It literally went on my face. And I, and I was just going, and I'm not joking. It was like slow motion. I could see it coming towards me. And I was like, move, Sophie. And next thing I know, it's on my fucking face. So that happened to me this morning. The wind. Can you imagine exactly what I mean? Everyone's hair from the scrapes of the tube and all the dirt. And like a fucking floating rat just landed on my face. You look like you're having an like aneurysm or something. Are you okay? <laughs> just know exactly what you would have yeah. been like i was like oh and it was downstairs you would have looked at it going towards you in your head you would have gone move <laughs> you did. and i didn't didn't duck. i honestly think sometimes your brain works so quickly but your body acts so slowly you, you, yeah let's be honest my brain works quite slowly Dave. so slowly sometimes <laughs> it's literally so slow like why didn't i move oh that really tickled me. yeah Okay, well, we have a message from Sally Stewart. Now, we are getting married in Spain. Everyone knows this. She went to a wedding in Australia. Loads of animals, bugs, all those kind of things. I can't even imagine what that's like compared to Spain. What that's like. Yeah, just here we go. You ready for this? Yes. I wanted to share a funny wedding story from a few years back, if possible. A good friend was getting married at a winery in Mollymook, New South Wales, South Coast. <laughs> And the setting was absolutely beautiful. Picture rolling hills, beautiful wildlife, and the late afternoon sun. It was picturesque. The service was being held outside as the final guests were being seated. <laughs> a mob... <laughs> a mob of kangaroos rocked up to the <laughs> Like they were guests. <laughs> Imagine. These aren't your typical cute wallabies. Rather big reds that can stand over six foot tall and can be quite aggressive. Everyone cleared the area whilst two males proceeded to fight and knock over seats and decorations. Other roos then began eating the flower arrangements. It was utter chaos. The site manager had to let off a firework. No. Had to let off a firework from the evening display to scare them off. Where were they all stood? In the wedding room, eating, just where- fighting, quitting <laughs> chaos. Can't do anything. It's like- also, they hop, which is just adding to the whole image. Like, just hopping around. They just hop, don't they? Yes, just fucking nailing everything. Uh, fortunately, the bride was still en route whilst this all unfolded. So once the kangaroos finally buggered off, all the guests pitched up to tidy. That That's is genius, Sally. Imagine if just a group of kangaroos just... It'd be came. like wild boars in Spain, just a load of wild boars. Uh, Sorry, another thing just to add. Have you seen how expensive a ham on Iberico leg of la- ham is? No, how much? A grand per leg. Are you serious? I'm not even joking. That's what we're meant to be having in Spain. Well, yeah. I, so anyway, second list. Wait, per leg, it's a per thousand... Per leg, and we got 200 gas, so we're going to probably need... How many? <laughs> well, but I don't know. How many do you think? I have no idea. Uh, one. I'm not going to get really, more than one. Well, there you go. You sm- slim pickings are, about it. All right. Well, do you want to read a listener's message? So this is a breakup story. Yeah. It's anonymous, so okay. I mustn't say anything. All right. You ready? Oh, I got nothing else to do, so I'm right here. So I broke up with my ex-boyfriend the Feb before lockdown and I spent the next few months going on a mad one speaking to loads of boys on house party and fucking shit, shit up on the hinge scene, winky face. Fast forward to June, my birthday. My friend tells me that my ex really wants to see me. She's friends with him. I told her I hadn't seen him in so many months and I really couldn't be bothered. Eventually, she convinced me to just see him and he has things he wants to get off his chest. Also, I knew he wanted to get back with me clearly it's the day after my birthday my ex knocks on my door he asked me to go on a walk we go on a walk i wish i was on house party he lays out a pic it's house party like a dating app no house party was that app where people could go on and like chat wait so they go on a walk but she just wished they were on house party instead anyway 
He lays out a picnic blanket. <laughs> I'm hoping there's food. He gives me champagne. I drink the champagne. He gives me a letter. I open the letter. As expected, the letter is all about wanting to get back to me. I finally get to the end of the letter. Last line of the letter. Now look up. I look up. He's on one <gasps> knee with a diamond ring. Shut up. Oh my God. Will you marry me? He asks. I ask if he's joking. He tells me he isn't joking. I said, surely you must be joking. He said, well, will you? I said, no. He said, no. I said, we broke up in February. He said, we need to leave now we left he drove me home i asked to try on the ring on the car he lets me i regret asking to try on the ring i get home i tell all my friends he gets home his whole family are waiting there with the spread bagels, no! smoked salmon egg mayo the lot and that's the end of my rejected proposal love love the podcast i'm so glad sophie accepted you jamie oh my god she Not, rejected i'm dead that she goes drive me home and let me just try on the diamond for size can i understand that because do if you try on the diamond you like it like oh why not well i think if you try on a big ring you'd probably be like oh this is quite a shame wrong guy but right ring sorry wrong guy right ring is that a saying no just coined it myself oh my god <laughs> God, just, I'm so sorry. Threw the phone in, at, at my no, chin. That bounced off the sofa. And, threw, I'm so sorry. There was you're, no abuse. Here. You're aggressive and abusive. No, I'm not. I'm so sorry. It bounced off the sofa. Sophie, in retaliation to that, um, we have a message from actual Ronald McDonald. No. Yep. Ronald McDonald has got in touch. The clown. The clown. But he's not real. <laughs> well, it turns out Ronald McDonald is real. Now, this was a message from Laura last week who said her dad worked as Ronald McDonald. We spoke about it last week in the podcast. Oh, well, hello to Sophie and Jamie. Now, Sophie, this is directly to you. I've heard you believe I don't exist, so that means anything I say from now on doesn't exist. Although I have heard you've got bowel issues. <laughs> Jamie, you're a lucky man, but also unlucky. But you are the man. Sophie, I'm not here. Bye. <laughs> from Ronald McDonald. Wait, he should set up a cameo because honestly, I'd pay for that. That is genius. <laughs> Ronald McDonald just sent us a message. And he, everyone thinks I've got bowel issues. I hate you. No, well, they don't. It's not. Listen, that is just amazing. <laughs> oh my god, he does exist. I told you. Oh my god, that's great. Okay, we've got another listener's message, and this is a very sweet one from a lovely girl called Amy. And it's about you failing your driving theory test. Yeah, which is very embarrassing. Yeah. Ready? Okay, okay I'm ready for it. Hi, Sophie and Jamie. I'm just going to make this as quick as possible because I keep running out of time. I love the podcast, by the way. Um, I listen to your podcast with Sophie's dad on it, obviously. And um, when Jamie was talking about how he keeps failing his theory, I was like, oh God, I've got my theory test really soon. Hope I don't fail. But when he said about the, the stopping in icy conditions for like 10, it's like up to 10 times. I was like, oh, that doesn't sound familiar, but I'll keep that in mind. And I continued to do practice theory tests. Anyway, lo and behold, in the actual test, they did actually ask me that. Um, so I never thought I'd be thinking about Jamie Lang during a theory test. Um, but yes, I did pass first time. So I guess thank you. <laughs> and uh, good luck, Jamie. Hopefully you will eventually pass your theory. Oh, oh Amy. that is so... Thank, Amy, thank that you, is, Amy. Congrats on passing, not like numpty over here. Yeah, but it's hard. The theory test is really, oh, really hard. Up. Uh, we have another listener's message from Sean uh, Montgomery, who says, Hi guys, I absolutely love listening to the pod each week. I'm a primary school teacher who teaches children with severe autism and complex medical needs. And so spending the hour listening to you guys really helps wind me down after a busy day at work. It's amazing. Listening to the different engagement stories really got me thinking about my own. My partner, Jonathan, and I got engaged in August in the Amalfi Coast. Wonderful. It turns out that in order to receive permission for my parents to propose to me, Jonathan took them out and reenacted our very first date, which took place at Junkyard Golf, followed by a meal at their favourite restaurant in Manchester. That is amazing. That's amazing. Before giving me the opportunity to say yes, Jonathan showed me photos from the day, which had happened a few months prior. My heart melted that he had made such an effort to let them see an insight into where it began, but to also include their favourite spot. Just really solidified that I found my perfect person. Oh. To some, it's a small gesture, but to me, it meant the world, especially to see it when we were far away from home. Thank you for being the highlight of my week. That yeah. as a, is just That's the... wonderful. Damn it. Why didn't I do something like that? That had been so good. You did a good job. 
yeah, I know, but that's so that nice. That is a really lovely, lovely idea. Oh, just reenacting it and doing it that way, that would have been just so nice. Do you not think? I don't know if I could have reenacted it. No, but our first date, taking your parents to the Rosewood Hotel, having them dinner, you know, all that kind of stuff. Maybe, I don't know, we could have reenacted it in such a nice way. I'm not sure what we did on our, I think we just got room service. Our first date. We I'd went, have to get room service with your parents in bed. For our first date, we ordered <laughs> loads of room service and I'm doing like everything off the mo- menu and we sat in bed and watched movies and then we went to Tesco's down the road and got loads and loads of sweeties. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that with Patrick. <laughs> Didn't drink a drop. We were so innocent. Yeah, we like were so two innocent. Like little kids. Yeah, that's very true. And then you went to the lift to go and take a poo and got stuck in the lift. No, that was at the Corinthia. <laughs> okay, that was a different one. <laughs> All right. We have two proposed the pods. We have to give a shout out to Zoe Sugg. Big shout out. Big shout out to you, Zoe. Um, Zoe Sugg, Zoella, um, who I know has been a fan of the podcast. I'm a fan of hers. You're a fan of hers. Yeah. Um, love her boyfriend Alfie and their little baby as well. So sweet. And Zoe um, on her vlog showed that she was listening to Nearly Words on the camera. So that's one of the proposed the pods we absolutely love. Zoe, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. That means the world. But we also have another proposed the pod from A Day to Remember on Instagram. Hi guys, I'm a wedding coordinator based in Warwickshire. I help couples plan their big day from start to finish, from initial inquiry to host their wedding at a hotel to the big day itself. I always say to listen to your podcast, to put their mind at ease, to ensure them that things happen along the way of the planning process. However, I completely forgot about the poo talk when I first initially mentioned it to couples and quite literally crapped myself. Love you guys lots and lots and love the pod, of course. Oh my God, see, we can't be talking about poo anymore. Well, then you got to stop it, honey. I don't bring it up. You bring it up all the time. No, I don't. Moving on. Can't. All right. Well, thank you so much. Hey, listen, a big thank you to everyone who wrote in. Please remember, please, please, please send in all of your stories to uh, at Nearly Weds Podcast on Instagram, or you can send us an email, contact at nearlywedspodcast.com. That's the end of... Propose the pod. <laughs> Listeners messages. (laughs) That's the end of listeners Listeners messages. messages. We have so much to catch up on on wedding chat. There is just, it's endless what is going on and I feel like we really got to dive into it. Mm. Are you ready for this? I'm always ready. If you get stressed, don't worry about it. It's been hectic. We'll get straight into it. It's hectic at the moment with everything. It's hectic. I think there's a lot going on. It's Christmas. Everyone's so busy. There's a Christmas party every night, which although being really fun, I'm really tired and there's no time to do Christmas shopping and there's no time to answer the wedding emails and I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, but you 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 got cross at me because I haven't answered all the wedding stuff. Because you go, I will do it today. And I'd rather, Jamie, you just say, so if I can't do it, I will do it. I, I, I can't answer them. You're going to have to do it. But you promise, you overpromise and under deliver. That's what you do. What do you mean I overpromise and under deliver? Because you're a people pleaser. That's what I'm you do. I'm not trying to please you. Book you book in six people for dinner and you cancel on four. Last night you booked in two parties back to back. Rude on both guests. Be honest, you're stressed about it, aren't you? Yeah, because it's so stressful. Firstly, I am so bad on emails. Just call me. What's at me? I can't <laughs> reply. I hate emails. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. My laptop's broken. I hate them once again. Um, it's all done via email. <laughs> Your laptop is broken. Go and get a new one. Well, it's not actually broken. It's just got so many emails that it's like malfunctioning and I can't. I need like to hire someone to get the email. <laughs> How many emails? It honestly gave me anxiety. I think the laptop's broken because I've got too many emails. I went on to Sophie's email and she had over 12,000 unread it's emails. it's definitely up to like 30,000 now. It's on 30,000? And now it won't open my emails because I think the <laughs> inbox is just so over full. So then I don't get any of me, my emails on the laptop. So then I just hate the laptop. <laughs> I, I, it's so angry at the laptop. It's such a ridiculous thing to be. You can't be like that. But there surely is a way to quick fire delete it all. I know you guys are probably going to give me the way, so please do. Because I can't spend a whole day del- going through 30,000 emails. It's got too far now. So I just have to put the laptop to one side and just deal with it another day. Sophie, why do you think that it's going to, if you put it to one side, it's going to get better? I physically can't spend a whole day going through 30,000 30, emails. You don't need to go through 30,000 emails. I have to, because I have to delete them all, don't I? So, so then, so what, when do you reply to any emails? Never? On my phone. 
And also, I'm not replying to one because the order of the day and the entertainment side was your the only I've thing. I've done it all. I've done all of that. You haven't. I've read the email. You haven't replied. To the entertainment? We've been given the order of the day and we need to sign it off. And you, my friend, have not replied. Also, we're having dinner at our main course. Is that nearly 11 p.m.? Is that legit? No, we're not. Yeah, we are. That's so cool. That's Spanish. We're having our main course at 11 p.m. It's 10.35. No, Sophie, this is all wrong. This is No, that's really... not wrong. That's, that's how you do it in Spain, Sophie. you lunatic. No, Sophie. You have dinner, get some culture in you, you British piece of art. <laughs> We're not having dinner at 11 p.m. What, you think my dad goes out for dinner in Spain at 8 p.m.? Yes, you have dinner at 11 p.m. in Spain. It's at 10.35. So when's dessert? What time is it? Midnight? Well, I can tell you right now. Yeah, tell me right now. (sighs) Can you run us through the order of what's happening at our wedding right now that, that that we haven't even discussed? Prep for the bride, prep for the groom. Then at 5pm, guest call and pick-up points, locations, TBC. 5.15, guest transportation departs from pick-up points. Mini mokes available to take guests up to the driveway, you know, for all the girls in the heels, also just quite fun. 6.20, guests find their seats at ceremony area. 6.30, ceremony and shell at terrace. Oh, sorry, that's where it is, at the shell terrace. 6.30, procession starts. Jamie and mother right staircase facing the altar. Jamie stands on the altar stage and mother takes her seat. Penny getting full moment in this. <laughs> Hello. Groomsman number TBC. Yes, that's right, groomsman number TBC. Uh-huh. Right staircase facing the altar. Bridesmaids number TBC, mm-hmm, seven. Left staircase You're not facing- even, this is not making sense. Like you're reading it to yourself. Flower girl and page boy, left staircase face. <laughs> Sophie and Flower. That- Sorry, what is all these directions? Well, just, this is at 6.30. <laughs> Basically, the ceremony starts. Why are you telling where the page boy is standing? I don't know, I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> I like detail. 6.35, officiant starts. 7 p.m., ceremony finishes. So it's only a 25-minute ceremony, which I'm all for. I don't like those long ones. 7 p.m., when it finishes, guests are ushered from ceremony area to the cocktail reception area. 7 p.m., cocktail reception starts. Family photos, oh, couple photos, exhausting. couple joints. 8.30 p.m., guests call for dinner. 9 p.m., guests get seated. 9 p.m., dinner starts at Pond Garden. Oh, my God, Sophie, this is so long. I'm bored already. Well, do you want it or not? Yeah, keep going. 9 p.m., waiter starts to serve wine and water. 9, 10, bride and groom make their entrance from main house to well, get at seated. At what time? At what 9, time? 10. 9, 10 in the evening? Yeah, get, re- get with you it. You go to bed at 8.30. Not in Spain. I'm a whole new other person. <laughs> okay. 9.20, father of the bride's speech. Is that his name? Maybe it'll be Patrick Camus. Maybe Father of the Bride is your dad. Well, anyway, look, there's a speech going on, whether it's... Is it yours or whose is the first one? Yours, the Father of the Bride. Is that the first there's, one, there's right? There's no other person who No, but it be. doesn't say Father of the Bride. It says speech one. So you just made up Father of the Bride? Yeah. 9.24, a sunset. Scheduled in. 9.35, starter is served. 10.05, starter is cleared. So you get exactly, <laughs> is that 30 minutes? <laughs> to eat a starter. To eat a starter. I'll eat it in two minutes. Yeah, because you're a gannet, that's why. 10.15, second speech. 10.30, oh main course is served. 11pm, main course is cleared. 11.05, third speech. 11.20, first dance and cake cutting moment. 11.30, dessert buffet opens. 11.30, party starts. Boosh. 11.30, open bar. All the guests have gone. 11.30, open bar starts. 1 a.m., midnight snack. 1 a.m., first bar bus departs 2 a.m the after party starts at the pond garden 4 a.m end of party 4 30 another bus leaves have you replied no because that's your job to sign that off <laughs> why is it my job because you're I- doing the entertainment and then there's been a whole other thing with the band and, and all the schedule for that is kicking off I really can't be asked for the photos. I won't lie. Like, that's really going to bum me out. When all of our friends are having cocktail, like, that's the best bit, and we're having bloody photos. <laughs> we also need a schedule. And, we like, don't have a photographer. <laughs> They're all booked properly. <laughs> they are. I spoke to one guy who's booked. One guy? Yeah, yeah, Well, yeah. well done. <laughs> so if we got to, we got to at some point pick the celebrant. Yeah, we're going to pick the celebrant. Someone to actually do a wedding. And I know we had ideas. And I think, I still think a good idea would be someone like Spencer marrying us. Well, I'm down for that. But loads of people have said no. I think it would I think be. It might, I think I might start laughing. Quite a cute. Imagine we got one of our friends to do it. Well, maybe we do that. They have to get officiated, don't they? Okay, so can we, can we, 
can we no you don't can we promise by maybe next episode or the episode after that or a future a pretty soon episode that we're going to have this locked down yeah we promise you guys a pretty soon episode as jamie says we'll have it locked down all right okay it's now right. time for wed you rather now guys jamie this one is a real tricky one are you ready for this oh i'm ready for this are you ready oh i'm ready and really for this. think about this don't just reel off your answer like you always do like really think put yourself in the position imagine this was a true scenario okay well slow it down and then give me the wedge you rather okay sir okay sorry here we go Would you rather find your partner cheating on you at the wedding or be left at the altar oh my god well, they're both crap. Like, they're both so awful. Oh, my God. I would prefer to find you cheating. And that get re- out no, of here. No, the reason would be... You would rather me cheat on you. Because the- either way, I couldn't get back with you. If you left me at the altar or you cheated, like, you're done. What else if you left me at the altar? I-, I left you at the altar because I had something to do. I'd like. Well, that's different. That doesn't count. It's like you left because you just didn't want to go through there. So if I found you cheated, I would have gra- ground to really hate you. Like, I could keep that image in my mind to keep me strong to never go back there. Whereas if you just left me at the altar, I'd always be thinking no what why did he do it so many unanswered questions whereas if i found you cheating i would be like you're an absolute arsehole okay i would definitely say catching you cheating at our wedding would be the worst thing in the world you being what like having sex behind the loose with with some bloke at our wedding with the musician with the musician at like the wedding oh my god that would be horrific okay so you'd rather me leave you at the altar i know yes you would, i would i would rather me stand would, at the altar yeah because you then would get so much sympathy and he would quietly lap that up <laughs> i i cannot believe you think the fact that i would like you to leave me at the altar so i would get sympathy but so either, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be if about i that. left you at the altar and then i came back and was like look i'm really sorry i had like cold feet but can we get back together would you take me back yeah i probably would would you take me back no what you wouldn't take me back you left me at the altar at our wedding uh, yeah it would. i think if i caught big you mood. shagging someone at the wedding that i knew <laughs> yeah, like, I, I would never talk to you that would be a dagger in my heart if i got to the altar and don't worry she's coming and everyone just look and everyone doing this and then my dad just walks on shaking his head on his own Streak. she didn't make it so you're gonna go for me cheating you at the wedding just because i would need to keep a vision in my head i would <laughs> i hate the unknown so to not what know what vision would you have in my head your head you sleeping with like the bus boy, or I? The bus boy. what why is it why does it have to be the bus boy the moat driver <laughs> <laughs> okay let's just move on that's the end of where'd you rather Okay, we have our wedding favour today. I really love the wedding favours. And remember, we have our little box that we have of wedding favours that we're going to put all of them in. Um, Show it to camera. Well, it, it's, it, it's, it's not visual, but we're gonna, I'll put it up on our stories on our Instagram, at Lewis Podcast. Can you see it? It's made by our producer, Jack. It's amazing. We absolutely Handmade love it. Handmade by him. He's putting now a little red rug in it as a well. Little, not a red rug, a red velvet blanket. Oh, it's divine. So, um, so... <laughs> We love these things. So is this going to be one that we pick? What is our wedding favourite today and who's it from? So this is from Chloe. Chloe says, Hi, Jamie and Sophie. I love listening to your podcast. It makes me giggle a lot. My husband and I got married in July. Best day ever. We had a wedding bake-off where all the guests were invited to enter their bakes. These were then served as the dessert following our main course. We had two long trestle tables full of such variety of desserts and enough for a second day. We had a two-day celebration. Hope you had the best wedding day. Lots of love, Chloe and Dill. That is so clever because also save some cash. I'm so sorry. That is so cool. I love that. I love that. We could also say, guys, you can choose to make, because there's 200 people, we could say, choose to bring a starter, main course or dessert. And then we could cut. So if you're not, everyone's going to bring food. Oh, they could. If anyone's getting engaged this week. Good luck. If anyone's getting proposed to. Good luck. If anyone's thinking about proposing. Go do it. And if you're getting married, go and have the best time in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Thank you guys, we love you. Remember, if you want to get in touch, Nearly Weds Podcast on Instagram or contact at nearlywedspodcast.com. We'll see you next Monday for a hopefully not as tired episode. Goodbye. Goodbye.